Hey guys, so I wanted to sit down and chat to you about some of the high-end makeup and skincare products that I have bought with my hard-earned cash that I'm kind of like bummed about that I kind of splurged and invested in. Um, a lot of them are very, very disappointing. Some of them I have very mixed feelings about and um, there's a few that I just downright hate. The first thing I want to talk about I think is going to be really controversial because it is hyped mega on YouTube. I know a lot of the Towie girls love this foundation, a lot of my friends love this foundation, but I cannot get on with it and I have very, very kind of mixed feelings and it's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. Um, first of all, I'm going to take issue with the fact that it's called Luminous Silk. I am a dry customer and even when I moisturise my skin with a really hydrating, nourishing kind of moisturiser, I cannot see any luminosity or radiance, it's not kind of um, satin in the finish. On me it's very kind of matte, I find it really really hard to kind of blend the foundation into my skin, I can use a buffing brush and keep going all the way around and I'm just like I can see it sitting on top of my skin. I also find that it kind of clings to my dry patches especially around my nose and it just is so frustrating but just on me I don't find it luminous at all it's very kind of matte I will say that it does last really really well and it's a kind of foundation that I go to when I'm going out of an evening or going out for the day and I just want something to last and have that kind of staying power but apart from that I just don't rate it let's talk about Lisa Eldridge I absolutely love her as a makeup artist I watch all her tutorials and I just love her kind of effortless um, makeup that she does on herself and celebrities. So I'd seen her using this um, Laura Mercier secret camouflage um, concealer a lot in a lot of her consume, um, cons bleh, you know what I mean, videos. And um, it's really apparently good for like um, concealing spots and things like that because it's quite heavy coverage. So I was like, yeah, I really want to try that out. And um, I've got the secret camouflage in SC4. So I was like, cool, this is really good. And um, the lady at the counter matched me. And actually, it is too dark for me. So that's my first kind of bugbear. It's not the right shade. I wasn't color matched to the right shade. And that's so infuriating because this is not cheap. I really like the concept of this concealer. I like the fact that there is a lighter shade for when you're pasty and a darker shade for when you're a bit more tanned. But for me, when I try and mix it to the kind of shape I am in that particular time, it just never works because the actual formulations are so dry, it's really hard to kind of get them to mix well together. And you, I mean, you can see in the pan, there's massive cracks where it's so dry. This is just not worth the money. Okay, let's talk about Tarte Amazonian 12 hour clay blushes. I picked this up when I was on honeymoon in Las Vegas. I remember being so excited to buy this um, because it had been hyped about so so much and I got the shade Blissful. It was quite a popular shade at the time, I was very very happy to buy it and I only bought one shade because um, I think the blushes were just that expensive. Um, opened it up, took my blush brush in, popped it on my cheeks, nothing. No pigmentation, not even the hint of the slightest bit of colour on my cheeks, it was just nothing. And then actually I can show you now, when you go to dip your finger in and try and get a swatch, and I'm really digging it in, my finger in here, there's absolutely no kind of payoff, it's just absolute, I want to swear, it's just crap. Another blusher that I have beef with is from NARS, and it's their blusher in Lustre. I saw this, I think, on someone's blog, I really love this colour. It's kind of like a bronzy peach and it has a little bit of shimmer to it as well and I just thought it was going to look lovely, lovely for summer. Dip my brush in and again there was just not much payoff in the colour and I'm just like come on Nars, come on Tarte, you know you're massive kind of companies, makeup companies, what is going on and there's just very little payoff with this. There is more than this one where there is practically nothing. Um, this is just very like nee, you can't really see it and it's just like bleh looks better in the pan than it does on your face, so don't even bother with that one. So I picked up the Chanel Black Liquid Eyeliner. Gotta say, for the price of what this set me back, the, the packaging is very kind of cheap plastic. There's nothing heavy about it. It's really kind of light and just doesn't feel luxurious, doesn't feel very Chanel. And you pull the wand out and look how gross and disgusting this is. You would expect with a liquid eyeliner for it to be really wet and kind of dense with product, with black inky product and it's so dry and nasty. Also the nib is just an absolute nightmare, it's so stiff and rigid. How are you meant to get it in the kind of curve of your eye and do a wonderful and beautiful winged eyeliner? You just can't and I just absolutely hate this. I should have taken it back at the time and complained. The next product that I just don't like is from MAC and it's their Eyecol Crayon in Power Surge. I was looking for an eyeliner that wasn't black and that wasn't brown and this is kind of like a goldy bronzy colour 
and um, I just really like the look of it. I'd seen, I think, um, one of the girls on Pixie Woo use it in one of their tutorials, and I was like, oh, it looks gorgeous, and it does look gorgeous when you swatch it on your hand and when you first apply it underneath your eyes. The only problem is, during the course of the day, it kind of migrates from your lash line down below and you get the dreaded panda eyes. So definitely not worth the money and I'm so, so gutted because it's such a beautiful, beautiful colour, but it migrates and it just makes you look like you're so kind of haggard. Okay, so the next two items are from Tom Ford and I don't really actually own anything from Tom Ford, no I don't, except for these two itsy bitsy teeny weeny lipsticks and they're from the Lips and Boys, um, they were initially I think a limited edition collection but now they're permanent and I have the shade Colin and Francesco, really nice shades, prefer Colin over Francesco and it was kind of like my first purchase um, buying something from Tom Ford and I was so so excited and when they came I was so disappointed because look how teeny weeny they are they are literally the size of my pinky and i'm just like i almost feel that like on the day that tom ford designed this collection he was feeling really stingy with his like packaging every time i look at how small these lipsticks are compared to what i paid for them okay i've got one tool that i kind of have mixed feelings about I love it, but I hate it, and it's the NARS Eater Brush, and um, I bought it because I just thought it was fantastic, from what I had seen on YouTube of all the beauty gurus carving out their cheekbones, that I wanted to try it, and it is fantastic in that the brush is very, very narrow, and the bristles aren't too dense, but they're thick enough and tapered enough to pick up just a, the right kind of amount of contour powder that you can really carve out a really nice um, kind of cheekbone and just definition and everything. My only issue with this is that when I go to wash it, there's a lot of fallout, a lot of the bristles come out and it's just, it's heartbreaking really when I consider how much I paid for this. And then also sometimes when I'm contouring, you know, faffing around with it all over my face, it sheds on my face. There's literally little black bits here, there and everywhere. And it's so annoying because I don't really have very long nails. So when I go to pick them up, it's really, really difficult. I don't know. I love it, but I hate it. Let's talk about MAC's Prep and Prime Fix Plus Spray. So I thought this would be really, really nice. Before I apply my primer and my foundation, I could spritz my face and it can be all cooling and nice and give a little bit more slip. So that actually, that part of it, I do enjoy doing. And I do think this is really, really nice. It's very, very refreshing and cool. But on the other side, I'm not impressed with the Fix Plus side. So I was thinking where it says Fix Plus, it's kind of meant to lock down your foundation and make it last a lot longer. And it just really, really doesn't. I don't notice any kind of extra longevity in my makeup when I use this compared to when I don't. And it's definitely not a shadow, a kind of patch on the Urban Decay, um, what is it, makeup all nighter setting spray, it's just not. So I was a little bit disappointed. I mean, maybe I'm using it the wrong way, but the fact that it says Prep and Prime and then Fix Plus, I was thinking Prep and Prime, beginning and then ending, and it's all like lovely, but I don't, I don't know, I just wasn't that wowed by it, and I just don't think it was worth the money. Okay, let's go on to skincare. I've got two things that I wanna have a little bit of a whinge about, and the first one is from Pixi, and it's the Glow Tonic. Again, this is such a cult product. Everybody raves about it, and I found out about it from Caroline Hirons, and I love her beauty recommendations. Other things that she has recommended have really worked for my skin. This, as you can see, I really, really tried hard with, and I just can't get along with it. I just feel like it dries out my skin like something chronic. Yeah, a little bit disappointed with that. And then the last thing that I wanted to talk about is a product that I absolutely hate. And it is from Kiehl's. Oops, sorry, I dropped something on the floor. It's from Kiehl's, which again is another really hyped up brand. And it's their creamy eye treatment with avocado. So, I mean, it doesn't claim to be particularly anti-aging, but it's very kind of, uh, I would say, nourishing and hydrating because it's got avocado in it. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. Um, I have actually used quite a lot of it, but I hate it. When you take it out onto your finger, it's quite thick. It's actually very thick and I would say gloopy. And then when you go to rub it in under your eye, it just doesn't sink in at all. It just kind of sits on top and you really have to massage it in. And it's just, look, can you see? There's just, it's not being absorbed by the skin. And I just think it's just a pointless product. And totally gutted because I was gonna buy the small pot and the girl in Liberty said, oh, get the big pot because it's only like five or six pounds extra. I did. 
and I'm just lumbered with trying to finish this pot of cream off. I've got to say that it has been so therapeutic airing my kind of frustrations, feelings and disappointment about the um, products just here. And I know things are really hyped up on um, YouTube, on Instagram, and I just want to try and take a step back and not get involved too much, wait for the reviews to come out, and then actually see what normal people genuinely think. I do think on YouTube there is so much sponsorship and ad, ad adverts going on at the moment where bloggers um, partner with companies. I actually can't tell anymore whether um, what they're saying is genuine or not and I prefer now to read Makeup Alley um, reviews. I don't know, I just feel like everything is so amazing and I'm just like it can't be all that great and this is me kind of showing you my mistakes perhaps and silly purchases and impulsive purchases so note to self, don't be so impulsive and you know what, sometimes that can be so hard when you're in Selfridges or when you're with your girlfriends and they're buying things and you want to buy something as well and the second thing is also to do my research and um, be a bit more sceptical I guess, be more of a kind of conscious consumer I guess that would be it, so yeah I hope you've enjoyed this video leave me any um, video requests down below, if you haven't already subscribed and I will see you in my next one Goodbye! That I have bought and that I really, really regret buying. Regret? <laughs> really kind of regret. Regret. I spent my hard earned cash. Uh, <coughs> and that's because where it said prep and prime. Oh, prep and prime. Hello? Hello? Hello. Dinner is ready. Hmm. Hmm.